Hello there, this is the Shadow Ranger, and this is After Immortal, Episode 8, The Resurrection of the Antichrist. Uh, this story is going to center around the return of Jeff Hardy. Now, of course, with anything involving Jeff Hardy, it really depends on him having all his personal problems um, under control. You know, I would not bring back Jeff Hardy without... It, it, until he's proven that he can, you know, do his job properly, it's not gonna. And, and when we know that we're not gonna have another Victory Road incident, you know. Um. Again, I don't think TNA should bring Jeff Hardy back until he's got his legal troubles, uh, settled. He's gone to rehab then, and we are at least pretty confident that you know. We're not going to have another Victory Road incident. You know, TNA, that happened once, and they could recover from it, but, you know, I don't know, man. It's going to be a really big bull as company if he screws them again the way he did at Victory Road. So, again, with anything involving Jeff Hardy, do nothing until he got his personal issues taken care of and he can be a productive uh, member of the roster. I mean... I think we all can agree that a problem-free Jeff Hardy is an asset to any wrestling promotion. Alright, so. Um, like all of the After Immortal videos, the premise is, you know, the Immortal storyline has been going on for a long time. I thought it was going to end at anniversary, but it may go through, go longer. I've heard some say that the storyline may go all the way to Bound for Glory. It happens. That's okay. But again, my, my, my belief is that once this storyline ends, if Merle is defeated, Dixie has control of the company back, and everything has been set right with the world of professional wrestling, TNA has to be prepared. Uh, well, I should be start saying Impact Wrestling now. Has to be prepared with all new, fresh storylines, going a completely new direction, ready to go. And this series is just um, me you know, throwing out some storyline ideas. And like all these videos, it involves fantasy booking, so I have to give my disclaimer. I am in no way saying that I can write or book wrestling better than the writers or bookers of any wrestling organization. These opinions are mine and mine alone, and only represent something that I would personally find entertaining. So, how are we going to start this storyline? Is we're going to build up the return of Jeff Hardy. It has to be very somber promos. Not him, not showing him. Just um, just have Mike today saying that, you know, Jeff Hardy is going to return on this date. Uh, preferably, this really needs to be done on a live impact because if spoilers will ruin this storyline. This really needs to be done on a live impact and he's going to return and address the wrestling world about his actions earlier in the year. We'll be referring to Victory Road. We're not going to just flat out say it, but, you know, just referring to it. And, you know, really make it sound somber, like he's coming to apologize, like he wants to make up for it, like he, you know, he wants to a chance to redeem himself in the eyes of the wrestling fans. And I think a lot of people have expected that that's what he's going to do. That if and when Jeff Hardy comes back, they may do try to use this to turn him back babyface and sort of do some type of redemption storyline. And I gotta be honest, I don't like babyface Jeff Hardy. I haven't given a crap about Jeff Hardy for probably the past three or four years and until Bound for Glory when he turned heel. I like that guy. You know, like I always said that, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Jeff Hardy go back to WWE if he went back as a heel. I don't want to see babyface Jeff Hardy back in WWE, but I would love to see John Cena have a feud with the Antichrist, a professional wrestler. So, you build up to this live impact, you, you announce it every week, you know, Jeff Hardy's going to return to TNA to address the wrestling fans and speak about what has ha happened and what happened at Victory Road. Make it seem like he's just going to talk about it. So that live episode of Impact comes and Jeff Hardy comes out. Um, not just like Jeff Hardy, very cleaned up, no face paint. 
um, simple clothing, preferably dressed all in white. You want him to look sad, somber, somewhat pathetic even when he comes out. He stands in the ring and we would he would start off by saying something to the effect of you know how long does it take for a man to hit rock bottom and then he answers 88 seconds and then he points to the screen and the victory road match plays the whole thing his sting beating him in freaking under two minutes you, you just let it play And he talks about what happened to him, his issues. He even maybe even had him flat out say that, you know, he showed up under the influence and, and that is why he did that. That is why he embarrassed himself and embarrassed his family and embarrassed the fans and what he wants to say to all the fans now is go to hell. He tells the fans to kiss his fucking ass. All of them. I'm not bringing back some fucking somber, apologetic, please forgive me, Jeff Hardy. I want a, a even bigger heel piece of shit Jeff Hardy to come back. And that's what I think he should be. He needs to tell the fans to kiss his fucking ass and then blame them for it. Just like just like an addict does, where they blame everybody else for their problems. He should take absolutely no responsibility for his actions. Blame them, just like he did when he first turned heel. You did this to me. You're the reason that this happened. Because all the years I spent breaking my back for you and having to take painkillers. And you're the cause of my addictions. And you're all the reason that happens. And just blame the fans. Blame everybody but himself. Take z absolutely zero responsibility for his actions. They will boo him out of the building for that. And I want Jeff Hardy to be back as a heel and be a kick-ass heel that he can be. And I want him to start just beating the shit out of baby faces, preferably some of the TNA originals, some of the X Division guys, the people that the fans love so much and hate to see anything bad happen to. And what I want to lead up to this is Jeff Hardy is talking about how he wants revenge on the fans because they're the reason that everything bad has happened to him and that he can't destroy them all individually, but he can destroy them all emotionally very easily because he decides that he's going to destroy the man that they love most. And later that night, Jeff Hardy beat, attacks from behind and beats the holy shit out of AJ Styles. Leaves him beat down, bloodied in the ring. And you use that and you kick off a few and you let these two guys go at each other for months and feud with each other. They, those two guys together could have a, a fantastic feud. AJ Styles, the face of TNA, their hero, the one all the TNA fans love so much. By Jeff Hardy's mind is by destroying AJ, I destroy all the fans and get the revenge on them for what they did to me. Again, he never takes responsibility for the action. Because we know better. You know, hey, hey, we didn't force the drugs in your hand and make you take them and make you show up to work on, show up to wrestle in the knee gritted state. But that's the point. That's where the heat comes from. That he totally blames them for all of his mistakes, his mishaps, his shortcomings. You are the reason that I screwed up. You forced me on it. And I'm going to get revenge on each and every single one of you pissant piece of shit fans by destroying the one you love the most. I am going to ruin AJ Styles. I am going to beat him within an inch of his life. I am going to end his career. And all of you are going to be going to sit there and watch me do it. Doesn't matter when you start this feud or when you end it. Because whenever you want to bring Jeff Hardy back, whenever Jeff has cleaned himself up and he's going to rehab and can prove to TNA that he is ready to go and be back on the roster full time and not that he's not going to fuck them up, fuck things up again, bring him back. Just let him be an unapologetic, just buck passing asshole and in the meantime while he's shooting AJ attack a few other dudes have him have him jump Christopher Daniels or bust Christopher Daniels up with a chair let him beat the shit out of Amazing Red once or or 
you know, bring back an uh, old X Division guy. Everybody like bring back Jay Lethal for it. So it's so, so fucking Jeff Hardy can bust him up too. Just have him destroy everything that means anything to TNA. And then, ooh, ooh, I just thought of something else. You know what else I would do? I would get, um, I would have a, a, a pre-taste segment where Jeff Hardy has, has found, like, a storage area where TNA stores things they don't need, props and things like that. And we reveal that he has stolen the six-sided ring out of storage. And we do a segment where Jeff Hardy sets it on fire. You do it out in the field. And he just burns the motherfucker. Sets it on fire. Burns up the six-sided ring. Just try to destroy everything that the fucking Impact Zone marks. And the we love X Division. Everything that they just love so much. Just to make them hate, 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 hate. There is so much else we could do with it, man. He could beat up X Division dude, steal the belt. But mainly I would focus on AJ, though. Those are just small little other things he can do just to just to twist the knife. The main goal is... The, uh, Jeff's main goal is always going to be the destruction of AJ Styles. Because by destroying... Again, by destroying AJ, he destroys all of us fans. If he beats AJ to enter like he ruins AJ he makes he forces AJ into retirement then that is his ultimate revenge is all the fans everything else is just extra just an extra little dig at him and I think that AJ and Jeff Hardy could put on some really fun matches they could few for months really they could few for a long time and it was you know with him with Jeff Hardy doing his heel promos the cryptic promos he used to do, he he used to do, where he's in the backstage and are all pre-taped segments and things like that. I think that could work pretty well, and you'd get some pretty good matches out of them. Um. All right, this is only twelve minutes, so I'm gonna cut this video right here. I think I've made the point of what I want to do. Um, if I ever want to add anything to this video, I might come back, but I don't have all the, I haven't thought about all the details of how exactly I want to go piece by piece with this feud. I just think it would be a very good feud, um, upper card main event level feud between two main event level talents that people really get into. You don't really need any belts involved. You don't really need either guy to be the champion. Um, there's plenty of other dudes who could feud over the title. And this could be your top non-title feud because you know, you know, the past couple months the big like main event non-title feud has been J uh, Jeff Jarrett and Kurt Angle, and that's coming to an end pretty soon. So it's always good to have a, a non-title top level feud, and this could be it for the next several months. And I think I don't think anybody will really get tired of saying it, but as long as you book it book it well, you know, again, uh, Jeff Hardy with his head on straight. And AJ Styles together, they would have a, a series of fantastic matches. I mean, I don't think it would be possible for them to have a bad match. And I think Jeff Hardy kid had learned, got really good at playing the heel before he, you know, screwed himself over. And I think he could be that heel when he comes back. Because I don't want to see some apologetic Jeff Hardy coming back. Because now we all want to boo him. Because, you know... Because of what he did at Victor Road, now we have a reason to all want to boo him. Because, you know, they were trying to make Jeff Hardy a heel and find a way for to get people to boo him. And Victory Road gave us a good reason. So when he comes back, I don't think anybody's going to want to cheer for him. I think no matter if, I think if they tried to bring him back as a baby face, he would get booed anyway. But I say, fuck it, bring him back as a heel. He's going to have heat, build on it. All right, so let's go ahead and end this here. This is the Shadow Ranger. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.